with the forensics that are there, is it possible that you shot yourself, do you believe? There would be blood in the barrel. There would be, I think, something called tattooing around the wound. There would be um, the burn marks on my shirt. There is no evidence of any of those, and my DNA is not on the trigger, and I have no idea how I could shoot myself if I did not pull the trigger. Prosecutors knew this would be a major part of Linda Doloff's defense, so they sent the 22 caliber Ruger handgun and the shirt Linda was wearing that night to the Maine State Crime Lab for testing. Forensic firearms expert Kimberly Stevens. Look to see if there's gunpowder on the shirt. If the gunshot wound was self-inflicted, then we're looking at a shot that would need to be fairly close range because someone's arm is only so far. Stevens test fired the actual gun that shot the bullet into Linda's hip, and you can see the bright muzzle flash, which you would think would burn gunpowder into Linda's shirt if it was fired at close range. But surprisingly enough, Linda was right. The gunpowder the state expected to find was not there. I looked at it visually under the stereo microscope, and there was no powder residue on the shirt. And even though you get a muzzle flash, there was no singeing or burning of the material on that shirt. But the state, not happy with that result, was not ready to give up. Stephen says gunpowder can shake loose from clothing, so it doesn't always show up. So she performed a second test, this time looking not for powder, but for lead vapor. The lead vapor is very fine particle. It gets embedded in the weave, and it's not always easy to see. But a chemical spray will turn it purple and visible with the naked eye. And that's confirmation for lead. So prosecutors told the jury to ignore the gunpowder test, it isn't important anyway, and look at the lead vapors. They tell us the gun was fired at close range. It could have been one inch, two inch, three inches, anywhere along that, but it was no further than 18. Next, the prosecution went to work on trying to prove Linda had Jeff's blood on her shirt, tying her to the attack. But even though the bedroom where Jeff was attacked was coated from floor to ceiling, Linda didn't have much on her. She's got blood here on her left cuff, a little streak, and she's got spatter under her right armpit. So that is pretty damaging. I think it's consistent with a baseball stance and whacking somebody with it. But that, according to the prosecution's own blood spatter expert, Detective Scott Goslin, is flat out wrong. Is that accurate? I'm not sure that it's accurate to say that there was no other explanation for it. In fact, Detective Goslin's official report read to the jury said no conclusion can be drawn from Linda Doloff's clothing. The expert said Jeff could have spit up blood on Linda while she was comforting him. But again, the prosecution would not give up and still told the jury that Jeff's blood could only have gotten on Linda one way. How could she get those stains but for the fact that she was whacking him with this baseball bat? There's no other explanation for that. When she says there is no other explanation, that's not true. Um, I guess I would have to look at the statement. Right, I don't think that that would be accurate. 